Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. We're going to right click on the tab to duplicate it. And yes, we're going to right click on the tab to duplicate it. And then back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking and reports on the left. We're gonna open up the balance sheet as always, tap into the right as it's thinking, even though it's done thinking, and reports on the left, this time the profit and the loss. Closing the hamburger, I'm gonna change the range this time for the frame of, let's go from 040125 to 053125. That's where, we're, where the work's gonna fall here. Gonna hit the drop down and see this in a month by month, side by side, run it. Nothing's in it yet, that's good. Tab to the left, close the hamburger, scrolling up, same range that we're gonna change here. 0104, 0125, 053125. We could also see this on the side by side and the month by month. Run it, and there we have it. Tab into the left, we've been looking at e-commerce situation, selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, but rather online in the cloud with the help and use of third party software, such as like an Amazon or Shopify amongst others. So in prior presentations, we talked about how we can pull in the sales side of the transactions because generally, most of the time, we're gonna be separating the sales side from the inventory and cost of goods sold tracking, which means we're gonna be using, in essence, a periodic inventory system for the most part. And now we wanna think about a system on the inventory side where we're doing the easiest thing possible, just expensing the inventory and then possibly making a year end adjustment to comply with our tax compliance so that we can get a, a cost of goods sold and ending inventory calculation. So what might that look like? Well, if we had my Shopify store over here, we've got our Shopify store and it gives us some inventory tracking. So you're gonna have some logistical information to track the units of of inventory so that you can make sure that you have your stock in place to cover the sales that are happening in the future. What most people aren't doing or what takes a little bit more is to track the inventory, not just on a unit by unit basis to cover what you think the potential needs might be in the future for sales, but also to convert that to a dollar amount, which usually requires like a flow assumption as well, like a first in first out or a weighted average type of flow assumption but we're just going to expense it when we buy it and the and this results usually in some kind of uh, timing issues and so that's that's what we want to kind of focus in on so let's imagine we first just buy our inventory so we're going to buy our inventory when we buy the inventory we might see it eventually whatever our purchase structure that we're using to purchase the inventory is would eventually go through the bank feeds because we're going to be purchasing it with cash so let's imagine we're going to have a cash transaction goes to the bank feeds for the purchase of inventory. So we'll start off with like two units of, of our product number one. So most likely we would be saying, hey, we need two, we need more units of product number one so because we're getting low. So then we go through our purchasing process and eventually cash is going to go out of our checking account. So I'm just going to enter that instead of with the bank feeds, the expense form, which is a decrease to the checking account. So decrease to the checking account because we're gonna be paying for this. I'm just gonna call it vendor number one, generic vendor. And the account is gonna be the checking account. It's gonna be coming out of the checking account. Let's say this happens on 040125. And we're purchasing. Notice I'm not gonna use items down here because I'm not tracking inventory within the system, but rather I'm just gonna use an account and record it not to inventory, but rather just to the cost of goods sold. So I'm just gonna dump it into cost of goods sold, boom, and that's it. So I'll dump it right there. And the amount, let's say that the amount is going to be for $40. And so we purchased two units, we're gonna imagine at uh, the $40 total. So they're $20 each, but obviously when we pay for it, it's just gonna be a lump sum you know, that we're purchasing for the multiple units. So let's save it and close it. And if I go to my reports here, we're gonna say, all right, what did that do on the balance sheet side of things? We should of course have cash 
that is going out of the checking account. Cash is going out of the checking account right there, $40. The other side's simply going to the cost of the goods that are sold. Now they haven't been sold, that's the problem because normally we would put them on the books as an asset and then expense them in cost of goods sold when we actually sell them. So that's why we end up with this timing difference. But of course that accrual component of putting it on the asset uh, of inventory and then expensing when we sell it means that we can't just rely on the bank feeds, which was the easiest thing to do to just expense things when they leave the bank account. All right. So that's going to be the issue. But that allows us then to go over here and say, OK, now I've got enough products and I can adjust my products in my Shopify store to, to line up to meet the current needs. Let's also track this in Excel, noting that we are imagining a scenario where you are not tracking this information in Excel, but for the practice problem, we wanna put it in Excel so we can see what is actually happening over time. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit by holding control and zooming in. You can see you can also zoom in over here. I'm gonna select the triangle, right click on it and format the cells. I'm gonna choose currency bracketed numbers, no dollar sign and no decimals. I'm gonna put my headers over here, which are gonna be product one. Uh, we'll just put, keep it at that and then units and then unit cost and then the total cost. So let's make these our headers, home tab, font group and black and white and then i can center them let's say and then these ones i'm going to make them a little bit skinnier uh, like that and then i'm going to select these as well and wrap them home tab alignment and wrap them so we can fit it there i'm going to make this a date column you can do that by going to the numbers and then use the short date but i'm i'm going to get a little bit more fancy right clicking on this and format and I want to go to the, the date format that has no year in it. So I'm just going to pick this one that has no year. And there we have it. So it's going to be on 4-1. We purchased two units at $20. Multiplying that out, that comes out to the $40. So what we're tracking in our Excel system is just the, the $40. Again, I'm imagining we're not doing this Excel sheet in our if we were doing this in practice, we're imagining a scenario where we're not tracking it in Excel, but for the practice problem, we'll actually track it in Excel so we can see what's happening. Okay, so if we go back on over, uh, notice that we have no other schedule within QuickBooks that's tracking the, the units of inventory on hand because we just expensed them at the point in time that we purchased them. Now let's imagine sales happened and whatnot, and the sales are coming through and being recorded into QuickBooks in one of the ways that we looked at in prior presentations. But as those sales are happening, we're not recording anything related to inventory because we've decoupled them. We're not recording the decrease to inventory as the sales happens, but rather we're just expensing the inventory as we purchase it. So then let's imagine sales are happening and we decide that we need, and the in our, in our Shopify store, the inventory is going down and whatnot in units, and we decide we need to purchase more inventory. So let's do this again, and let's first put it into Excel and imagine what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, this time I'm gonna say on 415, we're imagining we need more inventory, and we're gonna say just one more unit of this one, let's say at $22. The point I wanna point out is that the cost of the 